to start, how did you get into journalism? It's a weird story and a long story. I work with a lot of students in journalism classes, and I, I tell them up front, I'm honest, I never took a journalism class. <laughs> I'm an English literature major, undergraduate, graduate school. I got used to rejection, which is a great part of the job as a journalist. I got rejected probably a couple hundred times when I sent out resumes to newspapers because I didn't have a journalism degree. I kept pestering the Albany Times Union on my third try, the great, late, legendary editor, Harry Rosenfeld, Gave me a shot. So I started on Night Police in 1984. Awesome. What are, what? Long before you were born, I'm sure. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm going back to ancient history. <laughs> so what is a Night Police? Is that like a night crawler that it's, we... It's like a night crawler. Um, you know, I was just out of graduate school. Uh, I had worked at my hometown newspaper in Tacoma, Washington through college. Mm -hmm. I had work study, first generation college student, proud of that. Um, so I had a little bit of skills, but I had not covered hard news. So they sit you near the police scanner, and nothing good happens, as you know, after 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. or 2 a.m., and it was always tragedy, shootings, fires, explosions. I remember on the, probably the third day I was there in 1984, in the summer, I started in August, got a call, uh, and when you start hearing multi-company called in, emergency squads, you know it's bad. So mm -hmm. it was out, on, out near Husik Falls, Route 7, convertible, young woman, 19 years old, carrying uh, nieces, nephews, neighbors, bunch of little kids back from an ice cream thing, hit a tree at full speed. And you get out there and they're picking up little children mm -hmm. from a field. And you realize, you know, why are you there to tell a story, but a, a horrific, sad human story. So the first thing I learned is to be a person and the journalist with a capital J, second, and I've seen in so many scenes like that, um, no offense to TV people, but sometimes they come in with hot lights and a hot mic, and I, I would treat the way I would want to be treated in, at, at the worst moment, you know? I sat with families where their son or daughter was just bleeding out. I sat in kitchens with uh, kids who had just overdosed. And when you see kind of the worst of humanity, uh, but, but the, the beauty is it's the moment where they want to share the story of the loved one that they just lost in some horrible, traumatic way. And that gives you empathy, I think, and, and gives you an insight into human condition. And then, you know, I've probably done 10,000 stories for the Times Union, and you try to leaven it up with happy ones. I know you're <laughs> a happy person. When I see you, you're always smiling and laughing, so there's heavy parts, but you try to leaven it up with some fun stories, too. So does a lot of, well, what does your uh, work usually focus on? Like, what are your themes? I, I like human interest stories, in particular people stories, you know, stories about like the underdog, someone overcoming a, a terrible illness or from the ground up. I like people, you know, who are first generation college students. Students didn't came up the hard way. Um, I like stories that sort of have an unexpected twist. So I also did long projects on domestic violence, uh, homelessness, uh, mental illness, prison issues. And you take on those big subjects and you sort of have to find real people. So it's always about the humanity, the real people behind it. And that's what I like about storytelling. And do you think like your experience with and being a night crawler with the night police, like that kind of led you to being this more empathetic, you know, people first type of Journ Ab absolutely, because when you see people at their most vulnerable and after they've just experienced a trauma, you sort of realize that, that you're there first to do no harm. I mean, journalists do take a kind of Hippocratic oath. And the other thing that always stuck with me, even though I didn't take a journalism course, I sat next to really good journalists, really quality journalists, and I learned kind of an apprentice. And it was the saying, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. It's perfect advice. So we do a lot of investigative work, go after, you know, bad corporate entities or, or, or corrupt business people or corrupt politicians. That's a big part of journalism, too. Yeah, and that's very important because journalists really do lead the way. Yeah, the fourth estate, you know, we're, we're sports, supposed to be the, the voice and ears of the people. So I like to write about people that don't have a voice, kind of the voiceless, but we also like to hold accountable people with great power and people with great privilege. So it, it, it is an honor to be a journalist. That's why I still write a weekly column for the Times Union, even even though it's been six years. I've, I've been gone six years at the Writers Institute, so. Oh, wow, well, yeah. thank you for doing the good work. <laughs> and every journalist it, it out there. It is a pleasure, you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's storytelling, it's seeing really interesting people. People say, like, why don't you write about yourself? I said, I'm not that interesting, I'm average. <laughs> There's so many more interesting people out there that have done beautiful things, you know? Oh, cool. So, I know you're the executive director of the New York's 
a state writer institute. Yes. Correct? Yes. Just so, director. Just but director. I actually have a new title, the Opalka Endowed Director. Just in the last couple of weeks, it was oh, announced wow. that Chet and Karen Opalka, who are generous philanthropists specifically for the arts, uh, endowed a directorship in my name, a $1 million directorship that will go to in perpetuity. So every year uh, there will be uh, money available to my successor and, and the next successor after me to fund really diverse, interesting program. So it's an endowment that never runs out, which is a beautiful that thing. That is amazing. Go Opalka. They're wonderful people. So I am the Opalka Endowed Director. Awesome. Officially in the last two weeks, yes. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Well, so give us a little bit about the New York State Writers Institute for folks yeah. who don't know. So we were founded, this was the big uh, announcement two weeks ago, uh, start of our 40th season. Uh, Chet and Karen Opalka were there. We announced this gift. It was just beautiful. But we're 40 years. We were founded by William Kennedy. He used some of his MacArthur Genius Grant money to fund. He always wanted to bring world-class writers in every genre from many countries to our campus and to Albany. And that's what we've done for 40 years. We've had over 2,500 writers, Nobel Prize winners, Pulitzer Prize winners, Booker Prize winners, the greatest writers in every genre and, and every kind of diversity you want to measure. So it's been a wonderful thing and we keep it free and open to the public. It's generous people like Opalkas and our sponsors, we don't charge ticket prices, which you would find in most cities like 92nd Street Y in New York City has a lot of the same authors and it'll cost you a lot of money to go there. So we, we present this free and open to the public because of our sponsors, so it's, it's a wonderful thing. And very accessible. Yes. So why do you think the Writers Institute is, is important for the writers community besides it being accessible? So we also hold free workshops. We do them in person, we do them online now to be acceptable, I mean more um, accessible, sorry, to people. And we also have a film festival coming up on April 1st, open to young filmmakers. We do a short film competition. We have a special category for students, which, which we love to get students involved. We have a book festival. We have all the local writers come talk about their books, sell their books. So we really sort of cultivate, support, and enhance the local writing community. And they're invited and involved on every level of what we do, from volunteering to being on stage with our visiting writers, which is great fun. That is. Yeah. And what's been your favorite event so far within your history of this? Oh, we've done so many. I, I mean, one of the great events, I got to interview on stage a Supreme Court Justice, Sonia Sotomayor. Oh, I love that. And after about three minutes, she said, do you mind if I walk around? I said, you're the Supreme Court Justice. I'm not going to say no. She had a wireless mic. She walked all over Sefki Arena. There were like 5,000 people there. She was pausing for selfies, <laughs> saying, hugging people. I mean, a real pro. And, and there's been so many. I mean, Salman Rushdie um, after the fatwa, so we mm -hmm. waited 30 years to get him. Unfortunately, he got attacked, as you know. You know, this is serious what's going on. We're also doing sort of symposium looking at these divisive issues right now and, and the ugliness that's also part of our dialogue and conversation in this country. So we, we've also addressed a lot of that with uh, attacks on the free press, uh, people not being open and accepting of other viewpoints. So we've also brought in authors that talk about that as well. Now, do you have any input within, like, attack on the free press? Because you're, you know, everyone knows you're a yeah, journalist, have, so how do we, you handle we, that? We've actually hosted four major symposium, symposia, the plural, uh, telling the truth in a post-truth world. Mm -hmm. Started after President Trump was elected, what was going on with the press. I mean, he called the press the enemy of the people, and uh, uh, we don't take that lightly. I think he was serious, and a lot of people uh, followed him in that thought. It's terrifying. So anyway, very terrifying. So we've had a succession of those, and most recently we looked at hacking, cyber wars, bots, and now with AI, uh, the University of Albany, where the Writers Institute is based and where I also teach, um, they're going heavily into AI, because that's also an incredible opportunity, but a scary opportunity in terms mm -hmm. of personal freedom, civil liberties, surveillance, you know. So uh, the world's moving fast and we try to address it at the Writers Institute as well as time-honored classical poetry or uh, literary fiction. We also address current issues with current books and the greatest experts on every topic. Wow, yeah. so there really is a little bit of something for everyone. That's what we, we love that. We, we've got, we had Melissa Gilbert, she had a memoir, <laughs> Little House on the Prairie. We had kids from five and grant, uh, seniors to 85 in that audience wow. and filled every seat in the house, 400 people. And so we also, you know, we're not just all highbrow. We like to, when I started at the Times Union, this always stuck with me too. 
uh, the old timers who'd been there for a while, they called me college boy because I had a <laughs> graduate degree in English, which is doesn't, doesn't really get you anywhere. You have to learn to be a reporter. But they called me college boy. They said, remember, the people who buy this paper, the ads that support it, eighth grade reading level on average. And I've never forgotten that. You, you, you can't forget, you know, when you're on a college campus that you're on kind of a bubble. And there's a lot of people who are struggling. And I like telling those stories. I like seeing what they're you know, overcoming and dealing with. We talked about the underdog story. So I always kind of remembered that you know, PhDs and Ivory Tower is a small little slice of the world. It's a big world out there. And I try to reflect that in our stories. And we reflect that in what we program at the Writers Institute. That's really a beautiful and amazing thing that you guys are doing. And how do folks and writers get involved with the Institute? Well, we've got a really dynamic website, nyswritersinstitute.org, and you can follow us on all social media. We have two or three events uh, some weeks, and we have a really busy schedule. Well, thank you, Paul, and thank, thank you for you, taking Jane. the time to talk to us today. It's great. <laughs> I appreciate it. You've been it. a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs>